Hi, I'm Melanie. I have been a teacher for more than 20 years. This year I'm in sixth and seventh grade language arts. I thought I'd make a video and show you some of the books my students are currently loving. First one up is Brown Girl Dreaming. Uh, it, it's a story, it's a memoir, I guess you could say, but it's uh, written in verse. I had a seventh grade girl come in on a Monday morning, put this on my desk and say, this is beautiful. It doesn't get much better than that when you're a teacher. So highly, highly recommend Brown Girl Dreaming. Um, the Divergent series has been super popular this year with girls and boys. So Insurgent, Allegiant, all of the books, even um, the little one that came later, Four, Everything Told from the Male's Point of View. That one's, they're even reading that. They just can't seem to get enough of that dystopian ideas and in line with that of course uglies um some of them went ahead and read pretties the second book in this series but i think after that it sort of fizzled out all right um i believe show me a sign is nominated for the newberry this year again um a seventh grade girl read this said it was really great it's about a deaf girl which is not your ordinary protagonist. And um, one of the reviews I read on this book said that the research that went into this, the author was uh, just being praised for how much research went into it. It's about a deaf uh, community, Martha's Vineyard. It's again, seventh grade, highly recommended. All right, let's see here, sorry. Uh, of course, anything Hunger Games is always a big hit. Oh, here we go. Monster being read by everyone and so unique. The writing style, it's written, um, it even has two different fonts to show you. It's written as a journal uh, by your main character where, well, of course I can't find it fast enough, but the journal entries written like this, but then when he's, this is how he, he's writing his journal entries when he's in jail at night. And then when he's in the courtroom during the day, uh, he writes everything, he writes that story as if it's a screenplay, sort of to separate himself from the reality of his very adult life. Um, but a very interesting read. Kids are always uh, ahead of where they're supposed to be, I guess you could say, in that book. They love it. This whole series went around like crazy with sixth and seventh grade girls. The selection series. Um, again, it's dystopian, um, different society, different kinds of rules. And yet uh, it gets their attention because it's a little Cinderella-esque. Although I don't know that they would admit that to themselves, but uh, basically, the selection, they're selecting who will be uh, the princes of this community. There's a prince, and he needs a wife, and they're sort of like their community sets up this Cinderella-type situation, which sounds kind of archaic, and it sounds like you wouldn't have a strong female lead character. And yet this character, the girl, the protagonist comes in and of course shakes everything up and ends up being a strong female role model, I guess you could say. This Ghost Boys has of course made its rounds through sixth and seventh grade. Um, everyone, boy or girl, who has read this loved it. Uh, one girl did come in and say, I really loved it, but it was so sad. I don't think I could read it again. So, fair assessment. Oh, yeah. If you haven't added this to your classroom library yet, you should. Blackthorn Key. Um, it is part of a series. I've only read the first one. I do have a couple of boys. I have one boy that's finished the second one and another boy in it and a third boy waiting to read it. Um, I have one girl right now in another copy of this one this is a magical book because it's historical and yet it's fantasy because there's magic. 
um, but it's Old England. He's the apprentice to the apothecary. Of course, there's a mystery to solve and great characters. This is a fast paced book. So some of my reluctant readers, I can get into this book. Um, however, it's kind of thick. So some of them were too intimidated to try it. We'll have to see how that goes. Then we have um, A Game of Fox and Squirrels. I think this one's been uh, nominated for the Newberry as well. I will admit that I abandoned this book. For me, it was a little slow paced for what I'm looking for to recommend to some of my more reluctant readers. The story was a very interesting story. Um, the kids called it sort of a, what's that? that movie Jum Jumanji or whatever it is where the game comes alive and it becomes dangerous. It's sort of along the same lines as that. So, you know, I mean, those that read it like it, it's just not action packed, I guess you could say. All right, now I haven't read this before we were yours, but one of my more advanced readers brought this in on a Monday morning and wanted me to know how wonderful it was. And I said, great, you know, I'll, I'll put it on my, I'll put it in the cart, so to say. And the next day she showed up with her copy and said, no, you have to read it now. So she is highly recommending this book. I haven't read it yet, but I promised I would. And I will. Schooled has been very popular. Again, not, uh, not too intimidating in length. It's good old Gordon Corman, so you can't go wrong there. Um, everybody who leave, reads this loves it. Oh, yeah. I am a Jennifer Nielsen fan. And if you haven't read The Scourge, it is worth your time. Um, although I will say, you know, in middle school, sometimes you, you can say things to pique their interest. And how I introduced this book was, if you're really freaked out about COVID, do not read this book because it is about a plague. And I meant that. Um, but because it's back, sort of, back in, I don't know. Actually, the time period isn't exactly set. You know, they don't say a year. It's not historical. But you kind of get the impression it's in the past. And yet, um, so with some of the things that happen, it's also a little dystopian. You can't believe it's realistic fiction. It's, it's not, well, obviously it's not real. But, um, yeah, I'm rambling. This is a good book. What else have I got? Oh. Have you heard of Breakout? I have a young man reading this now who really likes it. Um, it's the story of a community where some inmates break out of prison and uh, therefore the neighborhood is sort of on lockdown. And it's this, the main character has these adventures while they're not supposed to be out and about. But what's unique about it is that some of it is written um, in text messages or on post-it notes. Um, it just sort of breaks the text up a little bit. So again, even though a thicker book, it's, um, it's not an intimidating read. Oh, The Raft. Honestly, I abandoned this book. Um, but a lot of my sixth grade girls just think it's the best thing ever and they just love it. And, um, even one of my most reluctant readers said, I stayed up so late reading that book. So I'm all about what gets them reading. As you can see, you can probably guess what this is about, The Raft. And ooh, all of sixth grade read the K classic, love it. Can't go wrong with that. And they get the ultimate irony of the fact that the main character, Philip, is blinded, but he can't see Timothy until he's blind, in that when he could see with his eyes, he was incredibly racist. And then when he was blinded, he could actually get to know Timothy based on his character and his heart. And it was just it was so, so many great discussions came from that book. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. 
Ooh, yeah, here's one. Have you heard of this one, Finding Perfect? So um, one of my more advanced readers, you know, read it in a day or two, and she said it was a really good book about a girl who's trying to hide her OCD. And um, it's about her mom coming back from an extensive trip, work trip, and how she's trying to pull everything together so her mom will hurry home. Um, I haven't read this one, to be honest, um, but again, it comes highly recommended from seventh grade girls. I did read this one. Holy cow, you have to read this. If you haven't read this one, it's fantastic. Um, I don't know, I, it's hard to just give a snapshot picture of what it's about, but I get middle schoolers to read this by saying, this has one of the meanest mean girls in it I've ever read. And then they're of course intrigued by that and wanna read the book. It's a, about a lot more than that, but the, the antagonist in this book is is one of the meanest girls I've ever read about. She, ooh, she's mean. <laughs> uh, last shot, of course, I found a new writer who writes all these mysteries based around different famous sporting events, so hit with lots of kids. And there are several different sports involved. I had one young lady, sixth grade girl who loved the tennis book. So there, I got tennis, basketball, baseball, and football. Uh, let's see, the Matched series. Um, I think the girls would have liked it a little bit more if they hadn't read Divergent because they're sort of measuring dystopian romance, I guess you could call it, books against Divergent and while this was good, it did not measure up to Divergent. <laughs> and I'm kind of in at war with a few of my girls about the Reactive Trilogy. I have read them all, and or, well, all three, and um, the, kind of the running joke is I, will, I have the first one on the shelf. I'm reluctant to put the second one out, but this one girl just beg me and beg me to let her read the second book. So of course I caved and gave her the second book, but I, I looked at her and they're, so now they're teasing me that I looked at her and said, but I will not give you the third book. You're gonna have to get that one on your own. Um, and in, you know, cause as soon as the teacher makes a big deal about something, they're twice as intrigued. So, but I really, I'm really not gonna give her the third book because um, it's middle school and these get a little steamy compared to Divergent. Let's see if I have anything else. Well, you've probably already got this in your library, but again, I have kids who are specifically girls who really talk about this one quite a bit, uh, about the girl studying the jellyfish and the adventure that she goes on, the mystery she has to solve. Anyway, those are some of the books my middle schoolers currently can't get enough of and love. I hope this video helps you expand your classroom library.